and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kiriel, I have frizzy hair today, please try and ignore it. It's just what I was born with, okay, and it's a pain in the butt and I don't want to have to style it all the time, so this is what we're getting today. <laughs> Today we are doing a foundation review. I feel like I have not done one of these in ages and I haven't really seen a lot about this one online so I'm super excited to try it out. Today we're using the NYX Born to Glow foundation. As soon as I saw Born to Glow I was like I've got to try this because I love a radiant finish. So honestly my kryptonite. <laughs> if you are new here I have oily skin but I get dry and dry so they're the bane of my life. <laughs> but even though I do have oily skin I love to have a glowy complexion. I love to be radiant but I don't want to look like an oil slick so I'm on a journey to find the perfect foundation that gives me the best of both worlds. This baby right here is £10. I've got it from Boots. You can also get it from Debenhams I'm pretty sure and also online. It's pretty vastly available. This comes in 45 shades which is pretty good for a drugstore foundation. Even though some of NYX's products can be a little bit on the pricey side personally I feel but their quality is usually pretty up there. I'm pretty sure this is their cheapest foundation that they have. I'm assuming they keep the price down with the packaging because it's pretty basic packaging for a foundation but we're gonna see if the formula is worth the price. I picked up the paler shade I believe in the whole collection which funnily enough the shade name for this is pale. <laughs> Why are you gonna do me so dirty with that shade name? I feel attacked. <laughs> Everyone else is like nude, nutmeg, porcelain, alabaster, almond, buff and then there's me which is just straight up pale. <laughs> Honestly, you're gonna give me a complex, okay, NYX. It's it's just rude, that's what it is. It's just rude. Anyway, <laughs> I tried to look up the claims of this online and it has different descriptors on different websites. So I'm just gonna kind of compile what I found and just go through what this foundation is supposed to do, allegedly. <laughs> so on NYX's website, they said that it's a naturally radiant foundation and it's glorious, glorious. <laughs> It's supposed to be a buildable medium coverage with the natural radiant finish that lasts. It's supposed to blend like a dream and work to help create a smooth, even toned look. And that's pretty much all it says on the NYX website. And then on Boots it said it's created with a collaboration of pro makeup artists. And it's supposed to be for a healthy looking glow no matter what. And they point out that it's supposed to be good all day in all kind of lighting circumstances. It's supposed to reduce the appearance of pores, give you a just applied glow for 12 hours straight. Stay true to colour, zero flashback, zero cakiness and zero excess shine. So that is the kind of claims that I found online for this foundation. We are going to be putting this to the test. Does it match up to their claims? Is this a new holy grail for me? I don't know. Stay tuned and find out. I'm also going to include a comparison of this to other foundations that I own so you guys can get a shade gauge. Shade gauge? <laughs> Alright then. <laughs> Before we get into the swatches, if you are new, I do things like this all the time in my channel and I welcome you to join it. All you need to do is hit the red button down below and the bell button and I'll just notify you when I upload. We are almost at 750 people here. Honestly, I feel like we've grown so much like over the past few weeks. You guys have come here all of a sudden and I'm so grateful and thank you so much for joining. But if you're lurking and you're thinking, should I, shouldn't I? You should. <laughs> I'm joking. It's a choice. Do what you want, but I'd love it if you joined. <laughs> also, thank you for all the love on my declutter videos. They go down so well. Um, I'm so glad you guys like them. There's more are coming. <laughs> but yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna stop rambling. It's time for the swatches. Let's get on into it. <laughs> okay, swatch time. So the first one we have is the NYX Born to Glow Foundation in the shade Pale. Then we have CYO Life Proof in the shade 101. Then the L'Oreal Fresh Wear in the shade 15 Porcelain. Next over is Maybelline Superstay in the shade 3 True Ivory. And then MAC Studio Fix Fluid in the shade NW10. Then we have the Vanish Stick Foundation in the shade Blanc. And then finally we've got the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Matte Foundation in the shade 1110. Please ignore my hair by the way, it's a uh, rat's nest at the moment, I'm gonna sort it out in a minute. And also please ignore this, it's just like a scar, it was a spot, but now it's a scar because I picked it up. Anyway, <laughs> let's 
get on to the foundation, shall we? <laughs> Alright, so as per usual with my foundation reviews, I'm going to be using a sponge and a brush just to see which gets the best coverage and best finish wise. It feels like I have not done a foundation review in years. <laughs> So let's get right on into it. Already moisturized, primed, and everything. So let's get into this baby here. Oh, it's actually got a little seal at the bottom, which is great. And not so great when you've got nails, but <laughs> actually, I think you're a little close. I'm just gonna zoom you guys out a little bit. I think that's a little bit more acceptable. Okay. <laughs> So let's just see what the consistency is like. I've got some sparkly stuff on the back of my palette. Not quite sure where it's from. Please try ignore it. <laughs> but let's just see what the consistency is. Whoa. Okay. That's the consistency. It's quite thick and oozy. <laughs> I hate the fact I just called it that, but that's the first word that came to my head. Let's just do a quick color match. It looks very yellow, but let's see what it looks like on my actual skin. <laughs> See, the undertone looks pretty good. In real life, it looks like a better match than on camera. I feel like on camera, you're picking up a lot more redness on my chest, but there really isn't that much. It's really blended into my skin really well. I don't know why the camera is picking it up that way. Oh well. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to applying it to the face. So I'm just gonna apply a few dots around here. And let's see what this goes on like. I'm gonna use sponge on the side, see what kind of coverage we get. Not looking like a lot so far. <laughs> Yeah, okay, with the sponge, I barely got any kind of coverage. I did only dip in once, so I didn't really pick up a lot of product, but it has uh, pretty much just been soaked up through the sponge. See, I feel the color on my face next to my neck looks like it matches pretty well. I am just gonna go ahead and try the brush side. I've been loving using these little brushes recently. They're just so much easier to control the product with. It doesn't have a weird smell or anything, by the way, and the actual consistency feels kind of wet and tacky, but it's very lightweight. I don't really feel it a lot, but I can feel that there's something on my skin. Like on this side, it does have like a bit of resistance and a little bit of tack, so there is that. Okay, so I definitely got better coverage on the brush side, but not that much more in all honesty. They look similar finish wise. There isn't really a change in the way it's sitting on top of my skin. This is how much I've got left on my palette. Obviously, again, I've only gone in with a light layer, but I'm just gonna dip my sponge into the actual product and try and build up the side of my face. Whoa. Okay, maybe I picked up a lot of products. <laughs> This is absolutely fine. It's all good. Well, I'll just keep blending. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this up onto my forehead as well. Giving me a little bit more coverage. I'd say it's medium. I do slightly prefer it with the sponge. It just really melts into the skin that way. That is pretty normal for me. I do prefer sponge application, but I have been like in this brush to apply things. Just to make things quick and easy, I'll just be applying it with this brush. I'm just gonna try doing exactly the same. So going in on the brush and building up the coverage over here. I feel like because this is such a tacky kind of formula, it is kind of leaving stamp marks if I stamp and stipple it. Yeah, I much prefer the sponge side for application, so I'm just gonna go over my face with the sponge and melt it into my skin. Okay, so now this is on my skin, um, I've kind of let it set for a little bit and the tackiness has kind of subsided slightly. Finish-wise, I... Mm. I'd say this is almost more on the matte side. Like, it has a subtle sheen to it, nothing crazy, but the way it like dries down and kind of feels on my skin is almost powdery. It has like a matte feel, and like on the center of my face, I feel like it looks more matte than some of my other foundations that I love, which is so strange because it's called Born to Glow. I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> It's lightweight. I don't really feel it on my skin anymore. So the color match I think is perfect for me. As you guys can see, like my chest to my face, I feel like I match pretty well. I just need to go in and add concealer and a little bit of life to my skin because I am looking a little bit flat just because of the finish of the foundation. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup. It's now 11.23, so we'll call it 25 past 11 as the check-in time. I'm gonna go finish up the rest of my makeup and we'll talk about how things laid on top and everything and applied. Um, so yeah, I'll be right back. All right, so this is my hair. I can't be bothered to do anything with it so we're just gonna deal with it for now. <laughs> it's a frizzy, crazy mess. Also, I used an eyebrow pencil that was way too warm for my eyebrows. <laughs> so they're looking a little funky. So uh, please just ignore the mess that I am today. I really need to get rid of that eyebrow pencil. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so this foundation now has been on for just under an hour. It's 20 past 12. I finished up all my makeup. This line there is actually a little harsh, isn't it? <laughs> 
my bad. Recently, I've been using like cream contour and things like that with my foundation and I've been loving it. I've been using the Fenty Matchstick in the shade Amber and I just really have been loving that. I've fallen back in love with it. It's really good. I did however feel with this foundation there was a little bit of resistance with blending that product on my skin. It was just a little bit of hard work <laughs> to blend it out on this foundation. It kind of clung on to it a little bit. So that's just something to note if you like to cream contour. It's a little bit harder to blend out with this foundation. However, powders went over like a dream. And my skin feels really soft and smooth. Like I feel like it even kind of looks smooth when you look at it, especially around like here, like where my pores are. It just looks really blurred and smooth. So I really like that. I do have a few patches around my kind of chin area which are looking a little bit dry and it's like a little bit clingy maybe around the mouth area. And also I might be getting a crease already by here. So I'm a little confused with this one, I'm not gonna lie. Consider it's called Born to Glow and it's called a Naturally Radiant Foundation. It's pretty matte on my skin. I also used Max Fix Plus to set it down as well to kind of reduce some of the powderiness but I felt like it was just absorbed and didn't really do a lot. <laughs> we shall see how this one wears throughout the day, see if it gets any worse. We have a few cons but I don't mind the way my skin looks right now. I'm gonna go about the rest of my day and I shall check back in with you guys later and we'll see how this one holds up. Hey guys, so it has been a little while. <laughs> I've been out Christmas shopping because, you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And it's my day off. So yeah, I've been, I've been doing my thing out and about. So it's been a few hours. It's now 20 to seven. So all in all, it's been on for around seven hours already, but I am gonna be wearing it for a few more hours. So I thought I'd check in with you guys right now and let's see how my face is looking. As far as the way it's feeling, it's not as matte as it was originally. So I can kind of feel it on my skin. It's not tacky. I can just feel the makeup. You know what I mean? Let's see what it looks like. Hmm. Okay, I'm missing a little bit of product from by here. There's a little bit of redness coming through and it's looking a little bit splotchy by here. I don't know if I've managed to bump my face or something. It's looking a little bobbly around my nose by here. I have hair from my furry coat on my forehead. <laughs> okay, as I've touched my forehead, I've kind of removed a little bit of product. So it looks like if I touch my skin, it's just gonna come off where I'm kind of looking a bit oily. Overall, my face isn't actually that oily at all. I do have a little bit of radiance, but this is actually quite nice. This is the kind of look that I was expecting originally when I first put it on, but apparently not. <laughs> The colour hasn't really oxidised or anything like that. I really like the colour actually. It's a really decent one for me. I don't know why I've got redness on my chest. I think I've scratched myself at some point. <laughs> but yeah, apart from the like fading and kind of splotchiness down here, the rest of my face looks pretty good. There's just like a little bit of fading going on. I'm not too mad at this point. Um, I don't mind my face looking this way. Again, I kind of like the glow that I've got right now. It hasn't accentuated my pores, my fine lines, anything like that. And the creasing that looked like it was starting on my smile lines has completely gone. I don't like how movable it is when I touch my skin. I feel like I just pick up a load of product. But apart from that, it's not too bad. It looks all right. <laughs> so I'm gonna wear it for a few more hours. We'll see if it breaks down anymore or anything like that. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in a few more hours. Hey guys, it is now the end of the day. I need to take this makeup off because I'm feeling very tired. My voice is all croaky. I need to go to bed. <laughs> it is now 25 to 12. So this has been on for now just over 12 hours. So it has been a full day. By the looks of it in the monitor, I am quite oily. So let's have a look, see what I'm dealing with. Hmm. Okay, I have been editing and it's kind of come off on my chin. I've had some weird line marks going on right now. It's kind of come off the whole bottom of my nose. I'm very oily in the kind of center zone of my cheeks here. My T-zone and everything is kind of oily, but this isn't the worst I've looked. I've got a bit of creasing on my forehead where kind of like the 11s are starting to develop. It's looking like a little bit faded. I can see like redness coming through. My blush bronzer highlight is kind of faded as well. So I can assume that my face is kind of eaten away at the makeup with my oils being produced. It's just very like movable, like very movable. It is kind of expected with how oily I am, but yeah, it's just uh, not looking the best. As I'm doing this, it's kind of pelling as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm a bit perplexed with this one because it's so far from what my expectations were. I feel like what they've 
described it as and what it's actually worn like and what it applied like is completely different. <laughs> it applied matte, it pretty much stayed matte, and the radiance kind of came through, but that was just my oils. It wasn't like the actual foundation in itself. Something to note as well is I did use the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, which is actually kind of like a hydrating primer underneath this, and it still was quite matte. Yes. It's a bit of a confusing one for me. I did find it kind of smoothing, so it didn't enhance my pores. So it has that going for it. I just don't know if it's one that I'm gonna constantly reach for, especially now it's in the colder months. Maybe this would be better for me in the summer. It's all right. <laughs> I'm not rejoicing with happiness because it's an amazing foundation and I'm not really offended by it. So it's kind of a in-between, it'll do kind of foundation. And as far as it lasting for 12 hours, Mm, nah, debatable. Some of it's still on my skin, if that's what they mean. <laughs> yeah, personally, I'd pass on it. There are other foundations out there that are even cheaper that do better than this. I really love L'Oreal Freshwear for a fresh satin finish. Make Revolution Conceal and Define if you're looking for a matte finish. CYO Life Proof if you're looking for a dewy finish. Like, there's so many others out there that just frankly work better. So yeah, that's the tea on that. <laughs> I'm now gonna mosey on and take this makeup off and jump right into bed. If you are new, I hope you decide to subscribe. It's free and all it takes is a few little clicks just by hitting the red subscribe button and the little bell button and putting your notifications to all and that'll just notify you when I upload a new video. Uh, yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I hope to see you on the next one. Till then, bye guys. But I guess, but I guess, but I guess the ball, uh, stew tape. I'm also gonna enclose. Oh my god, I cannot speak today. We'll see how it lasts, and we'll see, and we'll see if.